Well, excitement is building with the largest celestial event of the year in Atlantic Canada, arguably the decade with the total solar eclipse happening on April 8th, 2024. Partial for some, but totality for several communities in Atlantic Canada. Tiffany Fields is joining me from the Burke Gaffney Observatory here at St. Mary's University. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Yeah, thank you. It's very exciting, isn't it? I'm so excited. So tell me, you know, obviously a solar eclipse happens when the moon passes in front of the sun, but you know, exactly how does everything line up for that eclipse and what determines where that path of totality occurs? Yeah, that's a great question. So like you mentioned, a solar eclipse happens when the moon passes in front of the sun in our sky. And that only happens when there is a new moon phase. So the moon has to be in the direction of the sun, of course, to block the moon in the sky. And it also turns out that a solar eclipse cannot happen every month because the moon is actually angled slightly above the path between the Earth and the Sun. So it's only when it lines up perfectly that the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun are straight in a line that a solar eclipse can happen. And it depends on the time of the day, where the Earth is rotating around underneath the Sun and the Moon, where that eclipse path will fall. So we're really lucky to have this eclipse path so close to home, uh, right above home for some. Uh, we're really, really lucky and I'm so excited. A lot of people say that, you know, this is a once in a lifetime event to experience a solar eclipse like that. Is that a true statement? Is this truly a once in a lifetime event? Oh, absolutely. I would definitely say so. And some might say like, oh, there was an eclipse back in 2017 that went through North America, but it's different when it is in your backyard. Um, so here in Halifax, we will not see totality, we'll see a partial phase, but many communities like you mentioned in New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island are going to see totality go right over their homes. And having totality, that path of totality go right over where you live really is that once in a lifetime or more mm -hmm. event. Um, the path of totality is really small, only about 150 kilometers wide wow. um, for any given eclipse. and Having that small path go over one particular spot on the Earth is really something that happens once every 300 or 400 years. Wow. So having it literally over your backyard is more than a once in a lifetime event. And for context, uh, the next total eclipse moving over Nova Scotia isn't until I believe 2079. Yeah, exactly. So 2079. a long time to go before we experience anything like this again, mm -hmm. at least in Nova Scotia. Absolutely. So when it comes to the eclipse, obviously you mentioned that totality will be over New Brunswick, PEI. Here in Nova Scotia, it's going to be partial. So what should people expect? Because I feel even though it's a partial eclipse, people might have expectations that this is going to be a very dramatic event and we're going to see you know, the moon passing in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. But in reality, with a partial eclipse, unless you're really near that path of totality, it might be a little more challenging. Absolutely. So um, for anybody ha that has the ability to get into the path of totality, I recommend that. Mm -hmm. um, get yourself into the path of totality. The difference between a partial eclipse and a total solar eclipse is really like night and day. Mm -hmm. um, here in most of Nova Scotia, so a small part of Cape Breton will see totality, but for a majority of Nova Scotia, we are going to see a partial solar eclipse. And um, if you're just going about your day like normal, going to shops, going to work, that sort of thing, you might not notice anything is happening. Um, what I would expect here in Halifax, where we're going to see about 94.5% um, of the sun covered up by the moon, I would expect that in the half an hour or so around maximum eclipse, so around maybe 4.15 to 4.45 in the afternoon, the sky might get a little bit dark. Um, but not very much. I'm actually really interested in hearing people's stories uh, after the eclipse, if they're here in Halifax, mm -hmm. to see what they uh, experienced, to see if they did notice the sky getting a little bit dark. Um, but it would be more like if a small cloud passed over the sun, sort of getting dark. Interesting. And maybe not even that. So if you're like a keen observer, there might be a few things that you notice. Maybe the temperature drops just a tiny, tiny bit. Maybe it gets a little bit dark during that half an hour around maximum eclipse. Otherwise, the sun's really bright. Mm -hmm. Even a few percent of the sun is really, really bright. So it doesn't affect our day very much if we're just in the partial um, path. So what about totality then? What oh, should yeah. people, if they're traveling, to New Brunswick or the other places, what should they expect in that path during this eclipse? 
Absolutely. So totality is when the moon is entirely covering the disk of the sun in the sky. So there's no more sunlight getting down to the ground. We're entirely in the moon shadow. When that happens, it's like a full sensory experience, really. It gets dark like it would shortly after the sun sets. If there's planets or bright stars in the sky, you can see those bright planets in the sky. I actually expect there to be some planets in the sky wow. that we can see. So maybe Jupiter, maybe Venus. Um, what else happens is that all around you, 360 degrees, you can see sunset along the horizon. Um, and since too, the sun is being covered by the moon, the temperature drops a bit. So it gets a little bit colder and the animals and insects around you think that it has turned to nighttime. The insects might start buzzing, the birds might start chirping, you'll start to hear your environment around you as well. So there's things to hear with the insects and the animals, there's things to see, of course. I mean, I didn't even mention the corona of the sun, mm -hmm. right? During totality, the moon is entirely covering up the sun and we can see the corona, the sort of, it looks uh, like sort of gaseous um, wow. around the sun. And you can see that with your eyes because the moon is covering wow. all of the disk of the sun. Um, so we can see things, we can feel things, we can hear things. The street lights will probably come on if you're around some street lights. Um, it's really an experience to have and it's best to experience it around other people. Go with your friends. Um, if you're going to a location that's hosting some sort of an event, um, some of the cities along the path of totality I know are hosting some events. And so if you can be around other people where everybody oohs and ahs, it's a really just incredible experience. I can only imagine yeah. what it's going to be like on Monday if the weather cooperates, of course, and fingers crossed that it <laughs> does. Crossed. Now, for those who are planning to view the eclipse, whether in totality or partial, the proper eyewear uh, filters for your cameras mm -hmm. is essential because oh, it's yeah. very harmful. So what should people be doing to take precautions when viewing this uh, solar eclipse? Absolutely. So it's so important that we have proper eye protection. If we look at the sun, any small percentage of the sun, even a couple of percent of the sun with our bare eyeballs, they, it can damage our eyes permanently. We don't want that to happen. So there are eclipse glasses that are available that block out more than 99.9% .9 of the light uh, wow. from the sun that make it safe for us to look at. If you don't have eclipse glasses, there are some other ways to observe an eclipse indirectly. So that's by looking at maybe the shadows on the ground. If you poke a small hole, say in a piece of paper or a piece of like um, poster board, you can see the image of the sun then projected on the ground or on a board or whatever you have set up. And what's really interesting is if you poke a small hole on a normal day, the sun is just a circle in the sky. But during an eclipse, the sun is a smaller and smaller crescent. And you can see that shape change with something like a pinhole projector or a pinhole viewer Interesting. Um, by projecting that image of the sun on the ground. So there are ways to view the eclipse safely with something like eclipse glasses or proper solar filters if you're trying to use a telescope or binoculars or a camera, you want to protect your camera. Um, or there's these indirect ways to observe mm -hmm. the eclipse too. Yeah, so don't use your regular sunglasses. No. Eclipse glasses, Yes. for sure, at a minimum. Yes, yes. So we're here at the SMU Observatory. Obviously, mm -hmm. you have this, you know, awesome telescope here, and SMU is going to be holding an event during this eclipse. So tell me more about what people can expect if they are planning to come out on Monday. Yeah, yeah. So Monday afternoon during the eclipse, uh, St. Mary's University out on our football field, we will have some telescopes with special solar filters. We've got eclipse glasses that we'll be handing, in, handing out while we still have them available. Um, so we'll have some students, uh, other people from the astronomy and physics department there to help the general public, whoever wants to show up, use those solar telescopes to take a look at the sun, uh, help them use eclipse glasses and get eclipse glasses. And we'll be here from about 3.30 to about 5.45, the total duration of the eclipse here in Halifax. Come and go as you'd like. Um, we're just hoping for some <laughs> I'm clear trying. skies. I'm trying to serve up the clear skies. And, you know, at the time of filming this, it's looking like it might be good. So, you know, fingers crossed that the weather's crossed. in our favor. But, you know, you mentioned earlier experiencing it with a crowd. And this could be the perfect place to do so. Absolutely. And finally, you know, this is obviously a big celestial event. But anything else uh, of note coming up in our maybe night skies yeah. over the next, you know, few months? So I'm going to stretch it out slightly longer in the next few months and keep 
sort of on the same sure. tone of solar eclipses, uh, because I've talked about these eclipse glasses, right? Mm -hmm. um, don't throw away your eclipse glasses, because you can use them any time to look at the sun, for one. And then also, about this time next year, um, in March 2025, there's going to be another deep partial solar eclipse that's visible okay. here from Halifax. And what I mean by deep is um, it's going to, again, be something like 90% of the sun is going to be covered up by the moon. So early next year, there's another partial solar eclipse early in the morning. Um, something else that's in the sky that's interesting right now is there is actually a comet that's in our nighttime sky. It's pretty low on the horizon right mm -hmm. after the sun sets right now. And so um, I would say if there's a chance over the next week or so to take a look sort of in the northwest sky, pretty low on the western horizon, there is a um, small fuzzy green comet. It's called Comet 12P Pons Brooks, and it comes around every 70-ish okay. years. So it's visible in our nighttime sky. It would be visible with just your plain eyes if you're out somewhere that's dark out of the city. Otherwise, a pair of binoculars or a small telescope can bring that into view. Well, in the meantime, Tiffany, we will hope for clear skies on uh, Monday. Tiffany Fields, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about uh, the solar eclipse today. Thanks so much for having me. And you can head over to the St. Mary's University website for more information about the event taking place here on Monday. And of course, updates on the weather, their forecast very <laughs> crucial. We'll have them for you on saltwire.com.